We are in the midst of uncharted waters as food and drink businesses in Wales and the rest of the UK. Things we thought we'd never see are now happening. And above all, it has put everything into perspective and has, has been quite a humbling experience watching how people and more importantly, communities have responded. Well, I've been asked to share suggestions on possible actions we as Welsh food and drink businesses can take as we try to adapt quickly and survive during these challenging periods. I guess I've been asked because I have a business in the food sector and I'm relatively or recently experienced a few years, which means I've done a lot of mistakes and hopefully learned from them. However, we never stop learning, do we? In, anyway, let's get going. Here's my five suggestions as asked by Kawain. My first suggestion is to make sure we, we watch after ourselves. Uh, when it comes to the nitty gritties, we only have three things as businesses, our own time, cash, and our own energy. We are likely um, to see this period lasting months rather than weeks. So we need to make sure we do watch after ourselves. It's going to be a marathon than, rather than a sprint, I'm afraid, from um, listening to the news. And um, you know, all the better if we can maintain a similar routine to what we usually have in terms of eating, sleeping, and doing some exercise. I know from experience it's much easier said than done. However, burnout will help and will help nobody. And sort of linked to this is the endeavour to maintain a positive mindset through all of it. Although there's plenty of negatives out there, a, a doom and gloom outlook will get us nowhere. Um, and uh, you know, th there's plenty to be positives uh, about the current period if only we see what's going on in the communities and the heroic response of the NHS staff. There's plenty to be upbeat about um, about this period. And last, uh, in terms of this point, I think it's probably quite a good idea to put limits on the amount of news and information we consume. Um, since the end of last week, I've tried to ensure I only listen to the news first thing in the morning, once in the day, maybe over lunch, and then in the evening. That's enough. Uh, not all day around, as I found myself doing uh, a few days ago to my own detriment. Right. Second suggestion is to minimise uh, or simplify our stock. Are there any ways we can release cash from our stock? You know, for me, standing stock equates to standing cash, uh, whether it's packaging or actual products we make. For most of us, this is not the time to build up stock because we'll tie up more cash. It's time to bring stock levels down uh, to the minimum level, which will allow us to continue with whatever level of orders we've got coming in. Um, and this is going to be especially true for some of us who might have started building up stock in February or early March in preparation for Easter. Um, and maintain, maintaining cash flow is going to be you know, key for this period. So another question linked to this that's worth asking is, are there any lines we sell that isn't really pulling its weight. You know, as producers, we probably get too attached to some of the products we've developed and launched. Uh, so maybe now is the time to have a harsh look and drop the lines we know that really don't justify the place. It could release valuable cash and more importantly, our own energy and time. Third suggestion is to keep communicating with uh, our customers. I think the last thing we want to do is to hassle people at this time. Um, there will be a number of very anxious business owners out there, understandably. However, the worst option, in my opinion, is to retract and go all quiet. Uh, first, we can at least express concern and share our best wishes. And we can, from a conversation, get an understanding of what our customers are doing. I've been very surprised to hear back. You know, some restaurants we thought were very likely to be shut are still doing some trade through takeaways, or in one case I've come across I've opened up a pop-up shop um, and they were glad that we called because they wanted to know more about our other ranges. Although the majority of the customer, customer base have seen their market collapsing over the last two weeks, there are you know, significant parts of the economy still trading uh, fairly well and from my experience up to now uh, which is March the 27th I've seen convenience stores, butchers, health food shops, zero waste stores and supermarkets still doing decent trade. 
So my third suggestion is to keep in touch with customers to make sure that we've got a proper understanding of what's going on there. My fourth uh, is to be ready to respond to new opportunities, um, which is sort of linked to my previous one about keeping in touch with customers um, because they, it's worth keeping an eye on any new product uh, we could easily bring to the market. It might feel sort of inappropriate to be thinking of opportunities at a period like this. However, I try to think of them as things the market wants, people want, and therefore part of a business function is to try and respond even at times like these. Um, there are a few obvious patterns emerging at the moment, including how the service sector in particular has to all sense of purpose shut down to the other pattern of more online activity. So if you've been focusing on the service sector in your business, are there any retail friendly formats you could develop quickly at a low cost? Uh, we have found retailers to be very understanding at the moment and want to help other uh, uh, local businesses. They are also, of course, in some cases going through um, uh, stock very quickly. So having an additional supplier might be attractive for them. Are there online opportunities for your business? Maybe now is the time to make it possible for someone to order online, whether that's through posting a message to your Facebook or to set up an e-shop uh, via your website. Personally, I use Shopify as a e-store solution and I can literally, from experience, say that a no-frills online shop can be up and running in an hour. Um, it, it's very user-friendly. Um, I, however, do think though that going online is only a small part of how we can respond as it isn't, I'm afraid, a switch we can magically flick on. It does take time to develop an online present. However, you know, one or two extra orders could be very handy uh, at this time. Lastly, uh, I, would I would keep an eye on complete new diversification opportunities. Some of us will have to literally uh, turn our businesses inside out, upside down to survive. Now, micro businesses has one distinct advantage over larger concerns, um, which is because of our size, we can react, respond quickly, you know, astonishingly quickly. We are nimble. So change isn't always comfortable. Um, and we've seen some very good examples of gin distilleries responding by converting their production lines to make hand sanitizers. And as business owners, our businesses tend to be in our affairs right there. Um, so we're probably not the best to see new opportunities or new diversification opportunities. So I would encourage if this is something you might want to explore, well, maybe you need to get a group of friends or family or colleagues together over Skype or Zoom and to have a brainstorming or a swatting session where you try to identify the strengths, what's the assets you've got, and how could you mothball certain parts of the business and maybe focus on a new avenue that could generate some cash. Um, on the news this morning, they, they, they were highlighting problems that self-isolators are having securing a delivery slot from the multiple uh, uh, groceries stores. And there's been examples, astonishingly, that people have been scammed by people knocking on the door saying they'll get groceries and they've just run away with the money. So there is a concern about how to get basic groceries to um, to people who are self-isolating. And these are people not vulnerable necessarily and are willing to pay, but they just don't want to go out uh, to the shops. So I just wonder, as an example of a diversification, if a food producer has a van, maybe that maybe there's a tie-in that can be done with a local retailer who can prepare the groceries and people are willing to pay a delivery fee, you know, possibly five, six, seven pounds per drop to get the essentials. So that's just one example, as well as the hand sanitizer with the gin distilleries. So I wonder if there are some diversification opportunities out there. So there are my five suggestions. You know, take care um, of yourself uh, in this period, as it's going to last you know, several weeks at least, maybe months. Um, 
you know you can minimize and simplify your stock keep communicating with the customers respond to new opportunities and maybe there's some new diversification opportunities as well i suspect my suggestions are things you've already considered or thought of and maybe all i've done is just encourage you to have another closer look there's plenty there are this plenty of assistance out there um, through Cowine and business wales and there are new programs being rolled out as we speak by the chancellor to help businesses and the self-employed so i do wish you and your family good health and uh, over the coming weeks and i think i'll be back soon with more thoughts on how we could respond to this challenge that we are all facing. Uh, Pop